Welcome back. It is Monday, December 4th in the NBA. My three favorite picks are on the way. We didn't have any NBA games on Sunday, but on Saturday, we brought out the brooms. 8-4 no sweep, baby. Well, let's talk about it. We had Sangoon. We had Sabonis and Curry. They all did their jobs. And then we had day two of the ladder challenge. We always play them for one unit that cash. Now, obviously, as most of you all know, we did lose on day three in the NFL. And while it was all NFL, I still do track it towards our record in the NBA videos because normally it is mostly NBA. And I don't really want to confuse you by having some tracked in the NFL, some tracked in the NBA videos. I'd rather not confuse people. So I just track it towards the NBA. So technically that is adjusted down below, but it's been a very good, you know, a very good Saturday. Let's hopefully continue that momentum in the NBA into today. I think the ladder challenge will probably return on Wednesday. Don't quote me on that, but maybe we'll start doing some straight bets on it. I don't no, no, we'll maybe make some adjustments going forward. But two more notes. Today, we only got, you know, two NBA games on. So today, I got my favorite straight bet in each of them, plus a long shot same game parlay that we'll be tracking for half a unit at the end of the video. I'll make it super easy for you guys to bet on it if you are a fan to a better, but just stay tuned for that. And then my last note, there is a Monday Night Football game, Bengals, Jaguars, my two favorite picks there. We're on a great run in the NFL, 14 and four over the past like two weeks. So definitely go show that video some love, but on a good run, got two picks there. Hopefully we can go two and oh and dominate that and end a very good and profitable NFL week. That video, I'll also link down below and at the end of this video. But you guys game for NBA picks. We're going to start in the first game, Celtics Pacers. My first pick is going to involve this guy, the great Tyrese Halliburton. We're taking his over 37 and a half points plus assist, minus 120 on bet 365. Now, I would play this at 38 and a half if you're like Austin. I do not have points and assists. What would you play? I'd probably take his points line. I think this is a good matchup for him to shoot a bunch. But I always warn people, you know, for Halliburton, you probably won't see me take his just points line very often because we know Halliburton's capable of going out there and getting 25 and 15. He's one of the rare cases in the NBA where a guy could drop 15 assists and no one blinks an eye. No one bats an eye. They're like, oh, that's just usual because that's how talented he is. And he's been really good for us. And we tried to back him on Saturday, but he didn't end up playing. And he was he was questionable, ended up getting ruled out. And while it is questionable today, Tyrese Halliburton is a gamer. He will be playing tonight. If he doesn't play, that would absolutely surprise me. But in an in-season tournament game where they need to win to advance, I imagine he will be out there. And we've seen in Halliburton's last nine games, he has averaged 30.2 points per game and 11.8 assists per game. He's attempting 19 shots a game, playing 35.4 minutes per game over this line in seven of nine games. Now, you look at the misses. One of them was a game he just didn't shoot well from the field and one was a blowout. In these games, he's just been shooting the ball a lot and been playing pretty aggressive. Now, the Celtics are a team that do pose a more difficult matchup than a team that is trash, that, that is trotting out against him. But I, matchups really haven't been, you know, it's, Halliburton's kind of been matchup proof. We just saw him smoke the, the Miami Heat, who's been heralded as a very good defensive team. And sure, Drew Holiday and Derek White, very good defenders. However, Halliburton's not really a guy that's, you know, going one-on-one -on, -one on guys. He's mostly getting a lot of screens, kind of playing on what the defense has given it to him. And... That's what's been working so well for him. And in a game where Halliburton has just been out going out there and probably playing more than he normally does, even given he's playing like 36 minutes a game, I think that it wouldn't be surprising if he plays 40 minutes tonight. I mean, this is a win or go home game, if you will, for the in-season tournament. And we've seen Halliburton play pretty well against Boston. His last three versus them, he's at 29, 36, and 41 points plus assists. Now, you look at the shot attempts. 24 shot attempts was the game he went over with 41. Then he had 14 and 13 in the other two games. So one of them ending real close to it. I really would be surprised if Halliburton only shot 14 times tonight. This is a very good Celtics team. The Celtics are going to put up points versus the Pacers defense because the Pacers don't play defense. But they're going to need some scoring. And if they are down, I imagine Halliburton will try to take over in the second half. And maybe he gets off to a slower start in the first quarter, which, you know, sometimes he gets off to a scorching start. I really do think in the second half he will take over if they are trailing. And they're going to need him out there a ton. So I really like Halliburton. I think he plays close to 35 minutes at least. And if this game is super close, we could see him play closer to 40. And and we know the ball is in his hands every single possession at home. I know he's coming off, you know, a minor injury. I feel like they rested him on Saturday just so that he could be prepared for this game. I really like his over. Give me his over 37 and a half points plus assists. You can take the PRA line, but I never count on Halliburton to grab rebounds. He just, that's not what he does. He normally lets other guys do that. And then they pass it to him and he pushes the pace. Now, my second play, and we're going to talk about the self, some Celtics players in a second in the same game parlay. But we're going to go to the second game because I obviously don't want to force too many picks into one game. We're going to talk about the Montes Sabonis, over 36 and a half PRAs, points, rebounds, and assists, minus 115 on DraftKings. Now, if you're like Austin, I need an individual line for Sabonis. I do not have the ability to play all of them combined. I lean towards his over and rebounds the most, 
but that's just because I think that's the most consistent for Sabonis. But I don't mind his over in points, and we're going to need some points today. I don't mind his over in assists either. We kinda, that's why I'm taking them all combined, and I would take this at 37 and a half. Now, we talked about Sabonis on Saturday. He delivered a winner for us, and let's see if he can do that again, because this season, you look at his numbers, 18.6 points per game, 11.8 rebounds per game, and 6.9 assists per game, good for 37.3 PRAs. That is what we need. We need an average game from Sabonis. And we win. He's over this line in 11 of 18 games. When he plays 34 or more minutes, he's over this in 10 of 13 such games, 77% of the time. Look, obviously I'm not the coach. I'm not determining if DeMontis Bonus wants to foul people tonight or not, and if this game is close or not. But I would be shocked if Sabonis did not play 34. Heck, I would think he probably plays closer to 36, 38 minutes tonight. And I'll take my chances with him being out there. The guy that kind of has to close out a lot of their defensive possessions. And I like this matchup for him. I mean, this is a guy that's really their only real center. They don't want to play JaVale McGee a ton. They don't. And if they can, they'll play Sabonis as much as they can. And they play him a ton of minutes normally. And you've seen in the games that he plays a lot of minutes, he normally hits this over. And the games he doesn't play a lot of minutes, he doesn't hit the over because there's maybe a blowout or he's in foul trouble or something like that. But this has been a good matchup against uh, against Jonas Valanciunas that he's played well against. I mean, you look at his five matchups against Jonas since arriving in Sacramento. You've looked at him. He's averaged 36.4 PRAs per game. He's at 36, 41, 39, 28, and 38 PRAs. So, sure, he's gone over in only three of five. One of those losses on the hook. You look at the two games. One game that he went ended on the hook. He shot six for 16. The other game was a game that he didn't even play in the fourth quarter. When they lost by 36 points, that was just a few weeks back. So I really think this is a great spot to back him. I think at home, that's where Sabonis will clearly play better. And while De'Aaron Fox is obviously the guy with the highest usage on the Kings, he's going to be defended by Herb Jones. Herb Jones is a very good defender. They call him the straight jacket for a reason. And I think he will have a tough job. He'll probably be picking him up all 94 feet, give or take. And I think Sabonis is going to be the guy bringing up the ball initiating the offense and look he's going to be out there a ton he's going to play a ton of minutes he's going to grab a lot of rebounds at a very advantageous spot for rebounds but i also think he could get a triple double too tonight that one it surprised me and i also think he's gonna to have to be aggressive trying to score the basketball against jonas valentunas look jonas is obviously a big body down there but he does not move his feet too well laterally if sabonis can get him off off you know off balance he'll be able to go in there and score pretty easily so i really like this they don't have a great backup center larry nance jr is out it's cody zeller yeah i'll take my chances on scoring on cody zeller so i will trust with Savonis. He cashed out for us last game. I'll take his over once again at 36 and a half PRAs. I think he delivers a winner for us once again. And then my third and final play of the day, those are both tracked for one unit. This one's going to be a same game parlay, but we're only playing it for half a unit. I'll throw it up on the side of the screen talk about the legs in a second. Now, I do want to say at the bottom of the screen, I say there is a link in the description to make your life easier. It's a quick link. All you have to do if you're on FanDuel, this is only for FanDuel, you click the link and it'll automatically load in all the legs for you on FanDuel. And then all you got to do is click place bet. It's something we have added that is my opinion, a really good feature, and it saves you guys a lot of time instead of having to go through each and every game. So when I do same game parlays like this, I try to give you guys that quick link so that makes your lives a little bit easier. It's only for FanDuel because a lot of other apps don't let you do this, but I think it's a really cool feature. I'll kind of show, you know, if you've watched any of my TikToks for the YouTube shorts, you kind of know how it works, but the link is at the top of the description. Right below that link will be the Bengals and Jaguars video if you want to go check that out. But let's talk about each of these legs and why I'm rolling with it. Six legs plus 340, risking a half unit to win what? One and half units give or take i really like this one in the celtics pacers game i'm only talking about celtics jason tatum 25 points jalen brown 20 points and Derek white 10 plus points look this game has a high over under and the pacers don't play defense Jason Tatum, I liked his regular over, but it opened up at like 27, 28 and a half. It's now been bet up to 30 and a half. I really don't love taking a guy's for 30 and a half points, but I mean, he's been hitting that against the Pacers, honestly, so it wouldn't surprise me at all. And then as for Jalen Brown, this guy for 20 plus points, he's a big part of this offense, and he's going to go out there and he's going to shoot the ball. Like I said, this is a Pacers team that doesn't play much defense, so I'm confident he can score 20, Tatum can score 25, and then Derek White, another guy that gets to the free throw line, drives, gets open threes. I really think he lucks into 10 points tonight, even if he shoots poorly from the field he just that's just a great matchup for him to get it done no Chris stop so they really don't have a lot of mo a lot of depth out there I imagine in an in-season tournament game they play these guys a ton of minutes that's what we've seen from them in the playoffs I imagine all these three guys play close to 40 minutes tonight that's just what they normally do and I think they all put the ball in the basket now as for the Pelicans and Kings game a little bit different of what I'm rolling with they can Zion for 20 points CJ McCollum for five assists and Malik Monk for 10 points now I forgot to note 
Jason Tatum for 25 plus points for whatever reason on FanDuel did not have an over and you know that normally they have the 25 plus he wasn't in there they do have alternate points lines that you can take in there and that's kind of the same thing for CJ McCollum in here where you could take his you know normally FanDuel has four and six they also have the alternate lines for over four and a half and I really like that he has five assists in all the games this season gonna play a lot of minutes he's their true point guard I think he gets those points those assists for McCollum and hopefully he's dishing it to his teammate Zion Williams who's in a great matchup against the Kings a team that gives up a lot of points in the paint I think Zion gets us 20. And then the last like Malik Monk off the bench for 10 plus points. Look, I already talked about De'Aaron Fox being defended by Herb Jones. I think they need another ball handler out there. Well, I love Kevin Herter, love Keegan Murray, love Harrison Barnes, those guys. I think they need Malik Monk to play probably closer to 25 to 30 minutes tonight, given they kind of need another guy to be able to control the ball that isn't just Demontis Bonus bringing it up. So I would think Malik Monk, a guy that normally comes off the bench, easily scores 10 plus points. I think it's a great spot to back him. He plays a lot of minutes, and this feels like a game you'll have to be out there for a ton of minutes, too. He feels like when he's in the lineup, that's probably their best lineup they got out there. So that's a six-like parlay. Plus 340 on FanDuel. I will be playing just half unit on it. If you are like, what are units? Units are just a standard bankroll management term. I always put one unit on majority of our plays like we did with Sabonis and Halliburton. But this one, we're just throwing a half unit on it, trying to have a little bit of fun. But I really think this is a, is a pretty good bet. And if we can survive that Celtics Pacers game, I feel pretty good about the other legs going forward. But we're obviously just tracking it for fun. If you just want to put $10 on it or whatever, it doesn't matter. I'll just track it towards our, our record with a half unit play. But those are my three favorite plays of the day. Don't force a ton into these games. It is still only two games on if there is a blowout i don't want you guys to lose the shirt off your back which is why we're only doing two and a half units risk on these two games probably have a similar kind of game plan tomorrow with only two games on this is kind of a weirder nba week with some days no games on thursday i think is going to be the matchup of these a couple of these teams too i don't really know what the heck the nba is doing but oh well we'll try to make our money and try to do the best that we can a reminder there's that quick link in the description for my fan duel betters and there is that uh video or that uh, Bengals jaguars video is popping up on the screen go show it some love I'm Austin. I'm signing out. Let's bring out the brooms once again tomorrow, and I will see you guys again in the next one. I'll catch you then. Have a great start to your week. I'll see you in the next one. Peace!